as I'm reading, I'm like, this is this seems like one of those episodes of World's Dumbest Criminals. We have a gentleman in the state of Tennessee that started a business and he was in, he was a contractor, so did you know construction type um, work, but in this situation, he was the subcontractor. So there was a, you know, someone won a contract with a big organization. And so they said, hey, we can't do this part of the work. So we're going to hire another contractor that can cover this piece. Now, this guy was paid about a million dollars over, you know, you know, each year for about four years for his part of the overall contract. Now, when people hear a million dollars, people think, oh, my gosh, that's a lot of money. When you're running a, a construction business, that's really not a lot of money when you think about yeah, all of the other you. stuff that you got to cover, the labor, the equipment, um, all that stuff. A million dollars is not a ton of money when you're thinking about construction, especially when the cost of things are rising. But this guy got mm-hmm. paid this money. Now, the general contractor who hired them did what they were supposed to do. They filed their 1099s every year with the IRS saying, hey, we are saying that we paid, I'm just going to use a hypothetical name. Bob. We paid Bob's construction company a million dollars to support our project. The IRS already knows that Bob has been paid. Well, what does Bob do? Bob just decides not to file that on his tax return. Bob he files a million return. dollars every year. <laughs> a million. How did you think a million dollars is going to fly under the radar? Forget about even the dollar amount. I think to your point, like anyone that's, I think that's what I've seen. Like that's been what's been tripping people up is when you, when the company that hires you files at 1099, the IRS automatically gets a record of those payments that are made. So now they're just kind of sitting there and seeing, all right, like, are you going to pay on this? Are you going to claim it? And when the numbers don't match and you're not reporting it, because I think he did that for what was it four consecutive years where he yeah, did like not report any of years. that. So he did file a tax return. He just did not include that. He lied on the tax on returns. His... Really what he did. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he filed a tax yeah, return. That's true. And he didn't include that in the tax return to where it's just like, all right, when, so when it's time to audit this tax return, because the IRS is sitting back saying, Hey, you know what? John's construction company told us that they paid Bob's construction company a million dollars. Now we understand Bob didn't keep the whole million. He had to cover different expenses. So We expect to see something show up on his return. But when Bob filed his return, Bob Bob included zero dollars of that money on his tax return. And the IRS sees this like, okay, (laughs) something is not adding up here. And so when they started looking and investigating, they realized that Bob has been completely leaving that off his tax return, which it is tax evasion. Like, Bob was intentionally lying to the IRS saying, hey, here's how much money I made. Now, people may say, well, can't you consider that to be a mistake? Not, well, the IRS didn't consider it to be a mistake. They they considered it to be intentional, which made it tax evasion, which is why he got caught and why he's going to be sentenced to not only, you know, go to jail for some time, he's still going to have to pay it. Because the IRS isn't just going to be like, okay, all right, we'll send you to jail for three years, but you get to keep the money. The IRS is going to come back and say, hey, we're going to recalculate your tax, um, your, you know, your tax, you know, liability. We're going to recalculate that. You're going to owe us that money. We're going to get that money from you. And in the meantime, you're going to go sit in jail and think about what you did. And (laughs) it's just like... Put you in the corner. Go, you are in timeout, sir. <laughs> it's just not worth it. So, I mean, you know, that's why on- I would say that that people just need to understand, like, hey, if you're being paid as a contractor, do understand the IRS already knows how much money you made because that company that's paying you, they filed a 1099. So 
you're not getting away with something, they're eventually going to catch you and you're going to have to pay your money. And you might end up having to go sit in jail for a little while. And then when you come out, you got to figure out how the heck you're going to pay that that bill because they're not going to let that go. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think this is really where a good accountant comes in because if they if he had an accountant, I don't know if he was cookie, he was doing his home his own bookkeeping. Like, how do you just exclude a million dollars? Now it could be that he maybe he had some other contracts and it was just a miss, or or you know what, maybe just give him the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what, maybe, maybe he wasn't paid on, maybe he wasn't paid on time. And so he felt like because he wasn't paid, even though he had done the work and earned the revenue, that he really shouldn't have been including that as as his revenue. I mean. <laughs> Me giving him the benefit of the doubt doesn't matter. The dude has been found guilty and will be sentenced. I mean, so it doesn't matter if I give him the benefit of the doubt. The IRS, the IRS has been like, hey, uh-uh, you've had your chance. We're, we're dropping the hammer on this one. Yeah. And I think really, I think this is where it's important to have a good accountant, right? And to at least have a professional look at your stuff because someone could have easily said, hey, when I look at your your actual receipts and your invoices, like the amount you're reporting as revenue and your financial statements actually doesn't tie with what you actually collected. Because that would have been an immediate red flag when people, you know, when the account accountant was doing that reconciliation. So um I don't know if you know his his tax accountant did his um his financials or if he was doing them himself. Like I don't know what the story is there, but either way, the IRS found out, and now homie is is gonna have to go sit in the corner somewhere. So, I mean, and and that could be yeah. a very interesting thing. I, I mean, they didn't provide the details, but if he did have an accountant who was doing his tax return, that accountant possibly could be liable because. When an accountant does your tax return, the accountant also signs at the bottom that mm -hmm. they are they are certifying that they are not aware of any major omissions and that the information represented in this tax return is correct to the best of their best of their ability. Well, if the IRS digs a little bit more and they say that hey, this tax preparer did not do a due diligence to make sure that this information was materially correct, the tax accountant or whoever he had do the tax return, they possibly could get in trouble too. That's true. That's true. All this to say, do the right thing. If there's a 1099, there's a paper trail, you best believe the IRS is going to be checking it out and tracing it, and they will know if you do not pay your taxes. So that's that for this week's Tax Tea, and thank you guys for tuning in for another episode here at Stuff Your Accountant Just Telling You. Until next time. Bye.